Ronnie Radke takes trolling his haters to a whole new level. I got to admit to a huge fuck up that I made on a Love Bites video. We're talking about some scary news with Gotrick Spin and much more on today's show. Welcome to the Solid Sound Podcast where we talk about some of our favorite musicians from all over the world. But first, Ronnie Radke finds a new way to troll falling in reverse haters. This is just wild. We all know he is notorious for making a bunch of TikToks and shorts or like those small form videos, kind of calling out his haters either via the comment section or videos that other people put out on him. Well, he's taking it a step further, okay? So, Falling Reverses, Ronnie Racky has found a new way to troll his haters, actually working them into the band's live shows. Yes, you heard that right. He's working this into the live shows. And this is how. When the group returned to the stage to kick off their latest tour leg on Sunday, August 18th, Radke incorporated some of the TikTok clips of haters into the video screen behind him as he performed a portion of the song Game Over. According to setlist.fm, this was the first time that Game Over had been included into the band's live show since May of 2019. Only a portion of the song was played, but what caught the audience's attention was the video wall behind Radke featuring some of his TikTok critics freaking wild i just can't even imagine you make fun of an artist or you know you criticize an artist and they just like plaster you behind them at a show uh here is a clip So some of the people on X have commented about this. Or well, one person says, "Like I'm sorry, but imagine being these people and now having like at least a hundred thousand people see you and laugh at you in real time because Ronnie Radke was in charge of the production." One person saying, "Those people are probably so embarrassed. I'm sure they are. Watching them fall, they deserve it. I would cry. Oh my God. I mean, that's the internet. You're gonna post it for the world to see." You have to get ready for the consequences or the reaction to your actions, right? But as far as this being a little bit overboard, I kind of think it is a little bit overboard. Like he's really going in on the hate, but at the same time, I think it's hilarious. I mean, I thought it was funny when he just responded to the comments and he responded to the haters videos and made his own videos. I thought that was hilarious, but I guess this is no different than him sharing a video response he's just doing it live in front of people and for this person that said oh wow there's a hundred thousand people watching that in real time live i mean it's no different than millions of people watching it online i mean i really don't feel like it there's a difference but i guess maybe it's because there's a whole bunch of people grouped together but you know it's entertaining for those people at the show. I'm sure they got a kick out of it. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I'm on the fence about it. I'm not sure how I really feel about it, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. Let me know down below. All right, so this piece of news is a little weird. It's coming from one of our favorite bands on the channel called Dexcore. <laughs> have a lot of cool songs out there you should check them out for sure the singer had came out recently and made this comment so basically a few fans bought tickets to the performance but didn't show up he was upset that they didn't resell the tickets and went on social media saying they should apologize for not showing up and taking the spot of someone who actually would have been there so I was like wow <laughs> I can't believe you would put up a comment like that first off and I understand what they're getting at because it's very misleading when you see that you sold a lot of tickets and then you go perform for an audience and then it's not that big. But at the same time, would other people have bought in them? And maybe those fans should have gave them for free to maybe other fans. I know that happens a lot with some of the Japanese bands that we listen to over here in the States or when they have came over here, like Bandmade, Baby Metal, Nemophila. A lot of those bands, they have fans that do the same thing. But for the most part, a lot of those fans will just give out the tickets to other people that are fans that can't afford it. Sometimes I get emails asking me to give away some of these tickets, which I love doing because, you know, you're helping somebody get to those shows, which is cool. 
But there has been a time like with Nemophila when I went to their show in Dallas and that didn't quite happen. It was only half full, but there was a lot of instances of where we had multiple tickets that fans have had bought, which to me is really good because at least they're breaking even or somewhere close to even at least. But on the flip side, they're expecting a bigger crowd and then only have to um, have the buildings full. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Tell me what you guys think. But then it gets a little weirder because he deletes this post and he says this on his channel. Now, this is a rough translation. So take this with a grain of salt. It says, I deleted the post because I think a lot of people will be upset. And I'm serious about trying to reduce the number of people that who will lose out. So I'd appreciate your co cooperation. Sorry for the fuss. I don't get why he would delete the other post. You might as well just leave it up and then put this right afterwards so they could get some context to what he's talking about. I don't know. It's just strange. And as a fan of Dexcore, it makes me feel weird about it. It does sound like kind of why whine about it? Just stick to the music, <laughs> you know, play the music and put it out there. But maybe something that's really bothering him, bothering him. Maybe something's happening behind the scenes with his management that's uh, frustrated or maybe taking their frustration out on him. It could be something like that. I don't know the whole story. But also, maybe it just feels better not to have that post up there out in the open. And that's what I was originally thinking. But then he put up that post. So now I'm just really confused on why he would put something out there. I would just love to hear your thoughts on it. Let me know down below. Now, for the Love Bites criticism, I posted a video about Miyako's pedal board the other day. You probably realized that the video is no longer there or that it's unlisted. Uh, there is a reason why I left it unlisted. I'll get to that in just a moment. I did take it down because there was quite a bit of misinformation in the video. And I don't know how else to put this. I just fucked up. <laughs> That's... You know, I just messed up. I not necessarily rushed the video. I was operating on no sleep and I decided it was a good idea to do filming for this very intricate video. This like is a very information dense video. And I had been working on like gathering the information for quite a bit on it. And I have been just completely spent for the past two weeks. No excuse. I should have never put it out. And I definitely don't want to be known for putting out misinformation on pedals and stuff of some of our favorite artists. That is not my goal, that's not my intention. So I really appreciate the people that left messages on this video, you know, critiquing it and keeping me in check about it. Specifically, Garage Ears leaving a comment like this where he says, actually, there's a lot here that's just weird. Were you okay when you made this video? No. And then he goes on to explain what was wrong with the video, which leads to why I left this video unlisted because I wanted people to be able to go back to the video and read this pinned comment to correct some of those mistakes that I spoke about in the video. Some of the video, of course, is correct. About 70% of it is. Just 30% of it was me using just flat out the fucking wrong words, <laughs> honestly. Some was just the wrong words, and then there was one where I got my information just completely twisted. So I apologize, and this won't happen again. I am going to make sure I thoroughly go over the information next time when I do a video like this. Anyways, I feel really strange and awkward and horrible and <laughs> demoralized, honestly. I, f I felt like shit all day yesterday after this, so I just, I feel really bad, and but that's all I can say is that I'm sorry. And if you want to check out the video, I do have the link in the description. So you can check out his comment also on there. If you want to maybe correct some of the information that you got from the video, but didn't go down to the comment section and read. Anyways, unfortunately, we have some disturbing news about Gotrick Spin uh, that we need to talk about and bring awareness to, I, I feel like, so this doesn't become a bigger issue. Now, what is that issue? Gotrick Spin released this notice on their website just recently. I have a rough translation of it. It says, recently, we have received reports of multiple acts involving the identification of members, homes, and families. We deeply regret this situation. We kindly ask for your understanding as we are compelled to issue guidance regarding such disturbances caused by a minority. So they're saying there's a minority of people that are just stalking them straight up, just stalking them, which is wild. And this is in Japan. This is in the States, which 
be honest. When I first saw this, I was like, oh, this is talking about people in the States. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to assume that was the U.S. Don't ask why I assumed that. But anyways, then they go on to provide further details on this. Prohibited acts include waiting for our artists to arrive or depart and other unacceptable behaviors. Then they go on to give us more details on this. So actions such as ambushing and following on the street at stations, airports, in front of hotels, shops, public facilities, etc., that cause inconvenience to the general public and facilities, which is just wild that this is happening in Japan, honestly. That's why I assumed it was in the U.S. Ambushing and following at undisclosed locations, offices, studios, TV stations, radio stations, etc., now, they do address fan letters, which this completely makes sense to me when I was reading through this. It says, please refrain from sending the following items as they cannot be accepted due to safety and hygiene concerns. Living things, animals and plants, for fuck's sake, who is sending animals or plants? I thought it was wild. They wouldn't list it if it hasn't happened, right? Or maybe they're just trying to cover all bases. I don't know. Dangerous items, fireworks, blades, etc. Totally makes sense. Can't send cash or cash equivalents, including coupons, catalogs, gifts, prepaid cards, etc. Now, I was wondering why not for this. To me, I just see, oh, free money. Yay. But I guess maybe in case somebody put some fluids on it or something or put some drug or something that can make them sick. Maybe that's what they're referring to. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Uh, ambulance, talismans, expensive products, open or use items, handmade goods. Basically, don't fucking send them anything, all right? <laughs> Just don't send them anything. Don't do it. A lot of these bands have these rules for when they're traveling abroad anyways and touring. So then they go on to talk about gift deliveries for packages sent to our company. Please understand that it is not possible to specify placement in order to prevent obstruction, theft, damage, or corruption of shared spaces. Everything they listed above is pretty much saying you can't send anything anyway. This totally makes sense because if you send cash, the people that received it at the company could steal it or they might go through it before they give it to the artist. Inquiries regarding preferred delivery dates and times as well as confirmation of receipt slash opening at our company cannot be accommodated, which this makes sense because they're probably trying to sneak into the building or catch glimpses of the artists and things like that. This is just wild. All of this is just crazy to me. And then they go on to talk about other nuisances like spying, sharing information, monitoring, tailing, or tracking the artist's residence of place of work, which we just talked about above, taking or secretly recording photos and videos of artists, whether they are in private or at work. Huh. And... I think the work part is probably referring to their live shows, which is a big thing in Japan anyways. You're not supposed to be filming at most concerts for these bands. Even in the U.S., I believe, when I was doing the Gaijin Guys podcast and I had and we had our buddies Wave Potter and Ryan Mir go to the concert, they weren't allowed to share any of the videos that they took from that concert. So sharing information about the artist's whereabouts with others or posting it on social media which may facilitate ambushes. <laughs> These actions endanger the safety of our artists and staff, inconvenience to the general public, and could lead to unintended injuries, serious accidents, or legal consequences. Such violations of laws and regulations, as well as any behavior that causes trouble for the public, could directly affect the artist's health and ability to continue their activities. All this stuff sounds fucking frightening to me. I would love to hear your thoughts down below. I'm wishing them the best, and I hope that everything comes to a complete stop after them putting this out. But <sighs> I'm such a pessimist when it comes to this stuff. I doubt it. I doubt it. It's only up on their website. They should probably plaster this across social media. Maybe they already have, and I just didn't see it yet. Well, that's the show for today. Don't forget that we will be live on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time and also Sunday at 3 p.m. Mountain Standard Time with my buddy Eric, where we talk about more news and we do reactions to some of your favorite artists, guys. Hope to see you over there. Remember, you can catch this podcast on Spotify or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Apple, YouTube, either one. See you in the next one. See you.